Our ABC 7i team tonight with Unsettled Change. It was a day-long violent event that shook Chicago and the world 30 years ago. A deranged armed woman went into a North Shore grade school classroom, the first of attack of its kind, and that took and changed lives. But what else has changed since then? Eyewitness News investigative reporter Chuck Gowdy joining us tonight. Kathy, everything seemed to change on Friday, May 20th, 1988. The face of crime, the lives of so many, a community and a country. But 30 years later, there is unsettled change because even with those personally touched by that unthinkable day in Winnetka tonight, some things are no different at all. After 30 years, what we've tried to do is just um, put a Band-Aid on the situation. The teacher and the rabbi. There was a warning and no one paid attention. The police chief. If it could happen, if something like that could happen in a town like uh, Winnetka, it could happen anywhere. And the survivor. And I could actually feel the sunshine on my chest and thinking, this is too beautiful day to die. Four people whose lives suddenly changed on this day in Winnetka. But these numbing first pictures of the Hubbard Woods classroom under siege, the crazed look of Glencoe resident Lori Dan, her trail of six young gunshot victims, and the fresh face of eight-year-old Nicholas Corwin, who was killed, the dozens of others who could have died from her firebombs and poison treats delivered to friends and strangers that day. Even with all that, what has changed in our world three decades later? For me, I think the frustration is there that nothing has been done. And I really feel that, that wow, 30 years and we're still, we still have not done anything. It was Amy Dubel's classroom where the Winnetka shooting happened. Even though fate had put a substitute teacher in her class on that day, to this day, regularly hearing from former students, she is tormented by how little has changed. I hear the fear in their voice because many of them are now parents and have children the same age that they were when the shooting occurred at Hubbard Woods. They are also thinking that it's so sad that we are raising a generation of youth based on fear. God must be crying with us. That was the message that Rabbi Bob Schreibman delivered at the funeral for second grader Nikki Corwin. His message today is disbelief that people like Lori Dan, who shouldn't have guns, can still get them. They are mentally disturbed, but the ability to get your hands on a weapon, and particularly the weapons they use, is unbelievable. I can't believe that a country such as ours allows it. What I didn't see change too much was um, the issues with mental health, and that's disappointing. The former police chief says he can't be sure that even in 2018, a Lori Dan wouldn't be able to get guns and do the same thing. I think uh, there will be uh, other incidents, and I do think that the gun that will be used is out there right now. This isn't a hopeless situation. Phil Andrew is more optimistic. His family's home was Lori Dan's last stop. Before killing herself, she shot him in the chest. Rescue crews saved the 20-year-old college swimmer. After getting his law degree and working 21 years as an FBI agent and crisis negotiator, Andrew now oversees a new anti-violence effort for the Chicago Roman Catholic Archdiocese. 30 years later, Andrew is paying forward his own survival. All been about trying to kind of work off what happened and like maybe earn having survived. What we failed to connect with is that school shootings and shootings like the one that took place in Winnetka, as tragic and impactful as they are, represent less than 1% of all the gun violence. What does it take for us to start caring about a child in Englewood or Austin um, that's facing gun violence every day? The solutions are there. I think it's really now, 30 years later, is what do we want to do as a, as a country, as a community to make sure that every child is free from gun violence. That was the same question asked in 1988 and countless times after other mass attacks. Since Winnetka, there have been at least 153 fatal school shootings in the U.S., school shootings that have left 369 people dead. Those are some numbing numbers. Billy